So today I'll be going over a quick rundown on how to make a productive, efficient, and repeatable panel footprint drawing. So a lot of things we do in class, we don't really go over how to make a good footprint and how to make that repeatable especially. So let's say I've gone to the internet and I'm looking for this panel here. For the sake of this video, we'll pretend like this drawing doesn't exist, but a lot of times you'll find a part and there won't be a CAD drawing made for it, so you'll just have to use the spec sheet. So I'll use this here and I've saved it to my desktop. So I'll go back and CAD. Look at this AutoCAD icon up here. Import a PDF. And then you'll get this little box and don't worry. Just enter. Then to my desktop, the spec sheet here, open. And you'll get prompted with this. And this is just kind of saying what page of this you want. So the first page is catalog numbers for all the enclosures. And the second one is the drawing itself. I usually leave these alone. It always seems to work good. So click OK. Takes a while to go in. And then we get this kind of a mess. So I kind of like to clean up. Now you see here, all these individual parts are kind of drawn out separately, but a lot of times some kids get stuck on uh, if they come in groups. So I'll, I can go through that as well. So I'll kind of clean up this at first. So a lot of times it'll come in grouped like this. And you'll wonder, like, I can't get in there to keep adjusting and keep deleting stuff. So I'll have to go to schematic, symbol builder. And I'll here say uh, specify object. So for here it's groups. So I'll click that whole deal, enter. And then uh, panel footprint. This we'll get to later, the pick point. So then OK. Now you're into this symbol builder, which is a fancy tool. So what I like to do is I like to delete almost everything except for one dimension. One dimension it like displays. Go through and so now that I've got everything deleted, when you put in a symbol builder, it removes the group lines. So I've left a diameter um, distance right here. So I can be able to, so I like to do now is go to home, click on this little linear tool, which is a measurement tool, and then measure, I'll measure the diameter of that. Oh, it came in really it came in smaller than what it actually is. So now I like to get out my calculator. Actually, first I'll type in scale, make it the real size. That's entered. Okay, one divided by 0 0.0255. You grab this big number here. So I like to just copy it. While it's moving, then you click enter. So once you got your uh, calculated value here, that from uh, dividing the second, the bigger number by the smaller number, or what, whatever you need to go. So to, we need to go bigger, so I'll put the bigger number in first and grab this uh, scaled kind of ratio. So then I'll grab this whole part, type in SC for scale, start dragging out. That's where I come in here and paste that number and click enter. And all of a sudden, it's the correct size, 0.4. Four one eight, so a little bit of a rounding errors, but it won't be too much of a difference. And here, this is how it'll look. But this drawer or this little yeah is inside, so you're not going to see that. So let's delete that. And then from here, to make it repeatable, AutoCAD sometimes has errors if you don't put these in. So you just, sometimes I just insert them, but then go over them and scroll to the invisible and make yes. So you won't see that in your actual drawing itself, but they'll be there so you won't have errors. And from this point, you go to symbol builder, done. And then I like, to, you need to type up here so AutoCAD doesn't have some errors. So I'll type in enclosure for. And then here's the pick point. So when you're putting the repeatable block in, it'll where it'll drag from. And I'll show that here. So. I had to find the middle, so I guess I have to right there, the side, and here, and you can drag, and it'll click there. And then turn the icon image off, usually just for, uh, you know, saving space, and find your path. Usually you'll have maybe a database full of AutoCAD drawings, but for just now, I'll go to my desktop as well. Click OK. 
And then, yep, insert it after. Okay, this is the little background type function that AutoCAD has, and always click OK. Well, here, see how I picked it right in the middle and drop it in. Okay, it'll prompt you with a thing to insert, which I've made all these invisible, but sometimes you can have them. I can make them like back visible again if I wanted to and have descriptions say where the panel's located and what part number the panel is. So I'm delete this. And now you're kind of stuck here. So the thing I like to do is I like to grab on this whole deal and it's scale. So let's try 1.5. Oops, number left, 1.5. 1.5, we're gonna be still small, so I'll go two, 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 two. Okay. And now we'll grab this, move it into place. And do the same thing for other components like the back panel is also as well as the individual components itself, just using this insert or import PDF and then going through the symbol builder and doing all that stuff to make this repeatable. So if you see on my desktop, this FP underscore zero enclosure, that is the block itself. So if I wanted to use that ever again, I could just find that. So right here, icon menu, browse, go to my desktop. Here it is again, same one every single time. It's not going to change. So that's how you make stuff, make panel footprinting efficient and also just kind of looks better, more cleaned up every single time. Thank you guys. Make sure to hit the subscribe button.